There were many different female guards who worked inside of the concentration camps, but all of them had one thing in mind, to brutalise and commit horrific acts of savagery and suffering every single day. At some of the most horrific camps used by the Nazis, some of the female guards became known for their violent actions, horrific treatment and execution of inmates. Women such as Irma Grazer gained their nicknames such as the Hyena of Auschwitz, as she would patrol with her pistol shooting prisoners who were not working hard enough in her opinion. She would later be sent to the hangman's gallows for this, alongside another woman who was known as a woman with the dogs. It was an infamous name for a rather older guard when compared with Grazer and others, and Johanna Bormann would be executed at the end of the Second World War for her work inside of Auschwitz and also Bergen-Belsen. She was a woman who entered the camps because she was financially motivated, but she would become a murderess who was responsible for the slaughter of many women and children. Join us today to look at the rise and fall of the female torturer of Bergen-Belsen. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. What turns a woman into a horrific war criminal and a sadist? The rise and fall of Johanna Bormann is one that features her evil actions inside of some of the most barbaric concentration camps of the Second World War. She would rise to become one of the most barbaric female guards inside of the SS, but her fall would see her go to the gallows for it. She was a very religious woman in her early life, and she even embarked on missionary work spreading the word of God, but then she would go into a more sinister way of working. Johanna Bormann was a woman who joined the Auxiliary SS shortly before the Second World War broke out, in 1938. She was at the time about 45 years old, which is very different compared to many other female guards, as the majority were younger women in their 20s, who had been indoctrinated inside of many of the Nazi youth groups. Of course, Bormann was too old to be part of these, meaning she was a virulent Nazi who chose to support this evil regime, and she would have had different beliefs before Hitler rose to power. But Bormann was financially motivated, and she knew she could earn more money inside of the concentration camps with the SS than she would in a normal civilian job. To begin with, she was sent to the Lichtenborg concentration camp in Saxony. This was one of the first concentration and imprisonment sites and centres set up by the Nazis, and it was opened in 1933 by the SS, and it would hold 2,000 prisoners, and it then became a women's camp and a prison. Lichtenborg closed when the female prisoners were sent to the newly opened Ravensbrück concentration camp. This was where many female guards would learn how to become brutal overseers, or as serins, and a large proportion of the evil women guards who worked inside of the camps began their careers inside of Ravensbrück. They trained here, and then worked here for a short period, before they would be sent elsewhere, and these women were taught by teachers such as Maria Mandel. Most of the female guards learned how to become cruel and barbaric, and even Irma Grazer was at Ravensbrück once criticised for not being brutal enough. But Bormann used what she had learned to carry out acts of savagery, and at Ravensbrück she oversaw a work detachment, but in March 1942 she was sent to Auschwitz, the rapidly expanding camp in occupied Poland, which would go on to become the deadliest. Auschwitz became the largest camp of the Holocaust, and thousands of prisoners were being sent there most days, and the gas chambers and crematoria were constantly running, with people being slaughtered. With the influx of inmates, there were many other guards drafted to Auschwitz, and Bormann was one of these. She was known for her small size and stature, but her evil and vicious intentions also too, and prisoners learned how horrific she could be. Johanna Bormann was nicknamed the Weasel of Auschwitz, or the Woman with the Dogs, and she would use these pets to savage the prisoners. When she was brought later to trial, she was asked a number of questions regarding these pets, and whether she had a dog, and she admitted, Yes, I brought him with me, when asked a question regarding this animal. Johanna Bormann had trained this pet to kill and maim, and she also lent the dog to other guards, who would then make the pet more bloodthirsty, as they took the animal hunting in the area around the camp. Two witnesses would claim that inside of Auschwitz, they saw Bormann and her dog attacking a woman, and they overheard her boasting to other SS guards about the fact she had encouraged her pet to attack the prisoners. Another female inmate stated that whilst Bormann was overseeing female prisoners who were working outside the camp, she then let her large dog attack these women if they became weak or slowed down with their work. She claimed that some of the female prisoners attacked by Bormann's dog were so badly injured 
that they were then taken to hospital and some died from infections in their wounds caused by the animal and the fact that they were not given proper medical care. Some inmates who were injured by the dog were even sent to the gas chambers that they were said to have not been able to then work hard enough as they were injured. Johanna Borman later denied these accusations but more came her way as a lady named Helena Kerper claimed that Borman was the most hated woman and person and guard inside of Auschwitz. She oversaw the clothing stores and whilst here continued to use her pet as a weapon and during one occasion Borman saw a prisoner taking an item and she then grabbed this woman by her hair, threw her to the ground and then set her large dog on the woman which inflicted a serious wound that left a huge pool of blood. When the doctor got there the woman was not moving and she was then finished off inside of the gas chambers upon Borman's request. The dog also attacked another woman who was so badly injured she was inside of the camp's infirmary for six weeks. But as well as using her pet as a weapon, Johanna Borman was also adept at using other weapons, and one woman, Dora Silberberg, claimed that Borman struck a woman who felt so ill she could not walk to the work site, and when she arrived there she sat down and she was very ill. Borman then hit the woman so hard across the face that she knocked out two of her teeth and then set her dog on her. The prisoner then died in the infirmary, but at her trial the brutal guard tried to deflect and she said that other guards had dogs and pets at the camp and she continued to deny the allegations against her. More prisoners though came forward. It was said Borman was seen beating inmates who were wearing better clothes than she accepted then she forced them to undress and take part in strenuous physical torture and she did admit to hitting female prisoners who did not listen to her. But one of the most serious offences she committed inside of Auschwitz was that she would take part in the selections. This was where prisoners arrived at the camp and those who were not fit enough to work would be sent straight to their deaths inside of the gas chambers. Borman patrolled the selection yards and chose many people to be sent to their deaths and she did this regularly, playing God with people's lives. It was discovered during her cross-examination at the Belson trials that even the pigs at Auschwitz were being kept better than the prisoners were, and that these were given a lot of food, but the prisoners were not, and they were left to starve. But as the war turned against the Germans, Johanna Bormann was moved to Budi, a subcamp of Auschwitz, where her violent streak continued, and she was then transferred further to other sites, before she was sent back to Ravensbrück briefly, and then on to Bergen-Belsen. Belsen was one of the most horrific camps, and in the final months of the conflict, thousands of people were dying each week from the diseases, lack of food and supplies, and overcrowding at the camp. She worked under Joseph Kramer, the beast of Belsen, but the camp could not cope with the huge numbers of people being sent there, and the dead bodies and corpses stacked up. The camp was liberated by the Allies on the 15th of April 1945, and 10,000 unburied corpses were discovered, along with 60,000 survivors who were on death's door. But amongst the prisoners were a number of SS staff, including Johanna Borman, and she did not flee the Allies, but had stayed at the camp to try and keep law and order. She and other SS guards were forced to carry the corpses and then bury them in the mass graves, but now the fall of Johanna Borman was in full swing. She believed this work was degrading, and she would complain of the clean-up operations but Johanna Borman would get her comeuppance. She was sentenced to death at the Belsen trials for her role in the mass slaughter and the horrors of the Holocaust. She was a very dangerous woman, and she met her executioner in the form of Albert Pierpoint inside of Hamlin Prison. Pierpoint wrote of her that, She limped down the corridor looking old and haggard. She was 52 years old, standing only a little over 5 feet. She was trembling as she was put on the scales, and in German she said, I have my feelings. She was brought to the gallows as a war criminal, and was hanged during the Belsen executions, behind younger female guards, Irma Grazer and Elizabeth Falkenrath. What is shocking about Johanna Borman is that she was a lot older than the other guards who were condemned, but she had been indoctrinated by the policies of the Nazis, like millions of other people were. Johanna Borman committed many horrific crimes at different camps, such as Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen and Ravensbrück, and her actions were horrific, and the woman with the dogs became one of the most feared female guards of the Second World War. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.